from Sumas, Washington with a load of Canadian lumber. I'm Craig and you're watching Trucker Josh on TJV. Enjoy! Farmer Josh coming at you. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I'm still Trucker Josh. I'm still Trucker Josh. How's it going, everybody? It's a new day. Uh, we ended yesterday's vlog here, uh, delivering that mower off my trailer. We got that off of there. Now we've got three more stops. Swift Current, uh, Shaunavan. I think that's what it's called. I keep forgetting the name of this town. I've never heard of it before. Uh, the Swift Current, which is this one here. This one we're doing next, plus a crate up front. Uh, and then, yeah, Shaunavan. You can see it on the back of that there, written on there. Shaunavan, Saskatchewan. And we end off in Maple Creek. I'm trying to get them all done today yet. We might have to finish in the morning. I know one thing for sure. If I don't keep moving, we're not gonna get any of them done. Just delivered here. It's time to get going. I love tractors. Okay. Let's get out of here. Let's go to Speedy Creek. Formerly known as Swift Current. Rushing waters. Speedy Creek. Swift Current. Fast waters. Whatever you want to call it. Let's go. Don't anybody get in my way. Don't anybody get in my way. Moving slow, slow, slow. The driveway's just there off to my left. So Swift Current is about uh, an hour and a half. A little, a little over an hour and a half from here. Give or take, hour and 45 minutes maybe. Stop sign? No, I just have a yield sign. Nobody's coming, nobody's coming. Cyclists. Oh, wonderful. I hope that they see me coming. Okay, good. They're getting off the road. They were driving in the middle of my lane there for a second. Oh, I was like, oh no, we got they're those kind of cyclists. The super serious ones. Don't forget to shave your legs. Helps with the wind. I'm a professional. I'm all for people being healthy on the road, cycling around, but man, do I hate it that they're allowed to use the same road as me. That's so dangerous. I don't agree with it, but that's the law. So there's nothing I can do about it but complain. Bunch of cyclists on the road all the time. I'm actually somewhat of a cyclist myself, not to brag or anything, but I've got myself a pretty sweet cruiser back at home. Got the fenders on it and everything so I don't get my back all sprayed. Oh, oh. Old man cycler right here. I love my bike. Brett got one too. We need to do more bicycling. Maybe we should do some bicycling this, this weekend. Oh, look at this in the ditch. What's that? You see that? 
That was a buck. Anyone hungry? Dinner's in the ditch over there. is a big place. I don't got a lot of equipment on here though, so I guess it's gonna get busy here soon. They're gonna have to stock up. Big yard though. I just talked to them in there and they said go around here to where I see the other loaders and we'll unload that with the other ones. Check out this big, this is an air seeder, right? And I can correct me farmers if I'm wrong, but it's a little different than the one that I, uh, uh, worked around or that I was around growing up. It wasn't our farm, but they had an air seeder and the, the, the last part was a lot smaller than this one. I gotta go this way, but. That is a massive piece of equipment, eh? Yikes. Here's all the equipment, it's all in the back. Oh, okay. A lot of times they'll have it displayed out front, but oh, they're probably moving things around. I don't know, I find farm equipment so fascinating. It's amazing what people have invented. I come from a heritage of farmers, really. The Mennonites, that's what we did. Now we're truck drivers, but uh, in our area, there's two main occupations. You're either a farmer or you're a truck driver. I'm on the truck driver side of things. Hmm, park like right over here somewhere where you can get at both sides. There we go. That should, should work. All right. Change this again to say that I am unloading. Okay. Uh, okay. Oops. Pulls the door a bit harder than I wanted. They're gonna go along the fence back there, I guess. Okay, let's get our straps off so that we're ready uh, when he gets here. Some of these are theirs. I think this crate is theirs, and this one back here is theirs. It should say Swift Current. Swift Current, this one. Okay. Up here at the front, that's Maple Creek. That's Swift Current. It's just, just the one. What does this one say? I don't have any writing on it anywhere. Ah. Sean Chauvinen, whatever that town's name is called. I still don't know what that town name is called. What does this one say? Maple Creek. Okay. So it's just the one box. This crate here and that at the back. It's Gator Dan, son. He's going to be out here soon with his forklift. We're done. I'm just gonna do one more walk around, make sure I tied everything down properly before continuing down the road. 
you see their crate here is gone tied down that one again put the corners on and their loader here is gone this one's going just down the road so it'll be fine there put all the corners back on so that my straps are protected rubber to protect the actual load from my straps everything here so you have this one inch or two inch strap here holding the bottom of that bucket in just in case if that band snaps you have this up here going over the bucket holding the bucket down and the, the loader itself down you got this going over the actual loader here holding just the loader down and also you'll see in there that the strap is also holding the top of the bucket from being able to wiggle and pushing up pushing it up against the bands at the front here just in case the bands snap you always want to make sure that you have uh, a good backup never trust just one securement always have a backup because if one of your securements breaks or snaps there has to be something else holding that load on there so that you can pull over and fix the first strap okay because if you if you're if you just got one strap over it and that one snaps by the time you realize and pull over you've lost your load it's gone through someone's windshield and you're filling out a lot of paperwork and possibly being placed in handcuffs you, you, you don't want that if you were wondering that's uh, an event we try to avoid we don't want to hurt anybody and we definitely don't want anybody to die right old blue right <sighs> the paperwork signed figure out the address for our next delivery here it's going to Seanovan Seanovan is the actual make it our customer is just down the road across the highway that way and uh, didn't make it today so we're here at the Maple Creek truck stop the mighty Maple Creek truck stop all of you who drive up here know exactly what I'm talking about oh, this place is whew, parking lot they're working on it they're working on it be very careful. Uh, over there, you'll sink in to your axles and get stuck. Working on it. Watch out for these big rocks if you got low bumpers. Uh, this pavement is here for I don't know what reason, but probably used to be a building here. Watch out over here when you're coming around because you usually come in that way. Watch out over here. That could hurt. That could hurt. You can see some trucks have scraped along it already. That's a big drop there. They've uh, actually filled up all the potholes here. Uh, it's not packed yet. As you can see, they filled one up here. And uh, <laughs> that guy pulled in here and uh, showed us all that it's not packed in yet. It's a, nice, it's a good place to stop. 
garbage cans over there. You got a motel over there with a, a roof over your head if you need one. I'm going to stay in my truck though. And then you got all this space over here, but this area here with these trees, I don't know what it's doing here. It could be parking space, but nature, it's nature space. You need your green spaces. Watch out for this pothole. This guy nailed it. I saw his truck just drop right down. I don't think his bumper hit, but mine definitely would. Oh, I just got nailed in the head with a... What was that? Is that a bug? I think a bug just flew right into my head. Again, the potholes have been filled in, but they're still very soft. Very soft. And that's the Trans-Canada Highway there. We're facing south right now. And I've got to wait here uh, until the morning. They, ha they already have a truck coming first thing in the morning tomorrow, so they said since I only got two loaders on here, they could probably just squeeze me in anyways first thing. That was disappointing. I rushed and rushed all day, but it wasn't rushy enough. Uh, they said that they're open till 6, but their uh, receivers are actually gone by like 3 o'clock. I don't know why, but uh, that's cool, that's cool. So why they do things? Now we know. Kind of had a feeling already because I've, I've done this stuff for long enough. I kind of had a feeling no one's really going to be there at like 5.30, 6 o'clock. So I called ahead and said, oh, hey, I'll be there at 5.30. I see you're open till 6. Is there anyone there to unload me? I got two loaders for you. Said, oh, everyone's gone home already. It's like 4.30. Oh. Oh. No one there to unload trucker Josh. I have uh, six hours north to drive from my reload in Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan. I got a load of lumber that's going down to North Dakota. I was hoping to be there in the morning. Now I'm gonna unload here in the morning and then drive six hours up and be there tomorrow afternoon. And then probably get back down to around Chamberlain again, where we spent last night. Spend the night there and then do the rest on Friday, I guess that is. Deliver that load into North Dakota. And uh, I'm pretty sure I'll be just be going home empty from there because it'll be Friday already. Unless they got something for me to pick up. I mean, I'll, I'll go pick up something if they want me to, but uh, I have a feeling I'm just a few hundred kilometers or a couple hours from home at that point. They'll probably just, uh, I'll probably just go home for the weekend from then. I mean, this is trucking. You never know. You never know. Never assume, okay? <laughs>